Hey team, Professor Blowers back here to work on PowerPoint with you. Uh, today we're being welcomed to Sensation Park. We have a new employee orientation. Uh, here are the directions. And so first order of business, we need to uh, format the subtitle, new employee orientation as word art using the last style in the first row. Let's jump to it. So uh, first thing you want to do is down here, select the text new employee orientation as such. Click and drag over. That'll create a shape format tab up here at the top. You'll click that. And in the word styles group, you'll press the more button here. Click it. And it's the last style in the first row. It's fill dark green accent color four soft bevel. Click that. And then step three wants us to select the picture and crop the image. And some important notes first is you need to on the left hand side over here, you'll see the slide pane, which is where all of your slides uh, in the slideshow live. And up at the top in all of our tabs, you'll notice um, the instruction wants us to crop something to a ruler, but I don't see any rulers visible. Now this is pretty common um, throughout the Microsoft Office suite. So what you'll do is click on the view tab and in the show group, click on ruler. And notice how you've got a horizontal ruler at the top and a vertical ruler on the left hand side. Once you have the ruler, um, click the picture so you have the rotation handles on the outside of it. And with the picture selected, you will see the new picture format tab populated at the top. Go ahead and click that. And we need to crop the image. So in the size group in the picture format tab, click on crop and click the crop button. That'll put these new uh, handles on the outside of the picture on the border. And you'll want to uh, use the um, cursor that I have right here. So hover over um, the middle left um, handle and click and notice too up at the top on the ruler. As I move left and right, you'll see this red um, kind of marker that's showing you where you're at. Even though you could be way down here in the slide, it'll tell you where you're at on the horizontal uh, ruler. So what you do is with this cursor right here, kind of the sideways T, if you will, um, click it and drag it over to five, right about down the middle of five right here. Let go to crop it. Now you just have one more thing to do once you've, de once you've let go of this, and that's to go over here to the crop button and then just press it to crop the picture. And just like that, uh, we have um, given more space on our slide, um, decreased the size and crop the size of the um, roller coaster here. And we will move on to step number four, where we change the picture height to 3.5 and apply a glow 8 point turquoise. And so from here, uh, what you'll do with the picture still selected, you want to go, uh, and you're still in the picture format tab. It's asking us to change the height to 3.5. And then you need to use picture effects. And the one it asks us for to be sure, it is glow eight point turquoise accent color one. So in the picture styles group on the right hand side, the picture effects button, scroll down to glow. And that should be this one. Yep, that's right. Eight point turquoise accent color one. Click that. Be sure to keep that picture selected, right? And then hold down your control button. If you're on a Mac um, to select multiple things, it would be command, the command button. And then click on Welcome to Sensation Park. So you have the rotation handles on both the picture and the title. Then uh, we're still in the picture format tab in the arrange group. Click the align button and we'll align middle just like that so that it's a bit more organized. And start step number five. Uh, go ahead and click on slide number two. Step five is asking us. And again, what I like to do is when I finish steps, I haven't done it here, um, is to just highlight it, highlight the steps that we've already finished um, so that we know we've accomplished it. Um, just a minor side note. So slide two, it wants to remove the bullet symbol from the paragraph and change the shape fill to the third color, third column, second color, shape outline. This should be a real quick one. So let me show you how to do that real quick. Let's start with removing the bullet symbol. 
First thing you'll do here is click into the text box right before the letter O in our so that you've got that blinking cursor. Just press the backspace button to uh, manually delete the um, bullet point right there. And once that's been accomplished, um, what you need to do is click the shape format tab up at the top and shape fill, click that. Uh, we're in the shape format tab, shape styles group, shape fill button. Click, and I believe it is the third column, starker 10%. So third column, second row, background two, darker 10%. So like that one, and for our shape outline, same spot, just one below, click shape outline, and it is the, um, let me check really quick, because mine looks a little off. So bear with me a second. Theme colors, second column, first color. Okay, second column, first color, shape outline. Here's the second column, there's the first color. Now, it seems like my colors and my themes are a little off in PowerPoint, so just click whichever one is for you, even if it's not black text one. All right, looks great, and we're ready to move on to the next step. So please navigate to slide number three, which is a schedule and a bulleted list. First thing you'll do is click inside the text box and select all of your text as such. Um, right click anywhere over the selection. And what we wanna do is convert to SmartArt. And it's a hierarchy list. And so I'm not seeing it right here. So go ahead and move over, scroll down to more SmartArt graphics, click it. Click on the hierarchy tab. And you want the one that's called a hierarchy list that looks like this right here. Hierarchy list, great. Okay, now we have our smart art graphic. Excellent. And then we need to change the colors. And so let's see here. Go ahead in the smart art design tab, smart art styles group, click the change colors button. And the one we're looking for is colorful three to four. That's the one right there. And I think that one looks quite nice, right? So let me see here. Uh, then it wants us to apply the 3D inset style all right we're going to ch uh, change it to the 3d inset style so with everything still selected in your smart art styles um go ahead and click the uh, little it's the more button right here and we are looking for where is it ah there we are 3d inset style all right so that's one we're looking for click it notice the change and then we have moved on to step number seven, it looks like already. So it says on slide number four, change the two bulleted lists to numbering. Okay, so click on slide number four. We're good to close that down. And it says change them to numbering style. All right. So click into the first text box and select the text as such. And then up in the home tab in the paragraph group, Click the numbering button, and then do the same thing for the other one. Click in the text box, click and drag to select the text, home tab, paragraph group, numbering button, and now these are numbered. Okay, next step on slide five, change the bullet symbols to filled square bullets. So navigate over to slide number five. So here on the fifth slide, what you do is click into the text box, select the um, triangular bulleted items and then up in the paragraph group again home tab paragraph group click the drop down next to bullets and we want these ones to be square we also want to change the color so home tab paragraph group go ahead click the um, uh, drop down right here and click the bullets and numbering button for more details and here's the color button the paint bucket and it wants us to use the third column fourth color. So one, two, three, one, two, three, and four. For me, it's light gray background two, darker 50. All right, so we've changed the color of the bullet. And one last thing for that step two is in your uh, bullets and numbering group here, we want to change the size to 100. So apologies if you clicked out of that already. Make sure your size is 100. You're good. Next step, we're still on slide number five. It says we can insert a picture of a fire alarm uh, from online, but we already have the file. 
So I'm going to make the choice to insert um, the fire alarm from the file that we have. And notice all of these uh, tabs in the placeholder here, all the different things that we can insert into our uh, PowerPoint. So I'm going to select pictures, and that brings up the, um, you know, my file explorer. I'm going to go to downloads, 2G orientation, and here's the fire alarm right here. Click the insert button, and voila, we have our fire alarm, right? And if you look at this um, instructions, it says you can either search for fire alarm and search one online. But again, I chose to use the one that we already have downloaded, right? Um, step number 10 says, if the option's available, remove the background from the picture and apply the glow 18 point bright green accent color three picture effect. So let's jump into that really quick. And now it's time to remove a background. So have a look at this, right? So with the picture selected, uh, we're still in the picture format tab on the far left hand side in the adjust group. Click on remove backgrounds and oh, it turned it pink. Interesting. Well, what that tells us is that we did indeed remove the background. So everything looks fine. It kept the fire alarm, took everything else away. So I will in the close group um, and notice at the top, all the tabs have changed. I'm going to keep the changes. Now, it's a little bit rough around the edges, right? I know it's a small image, but if you're to zoom in on your own, it's a, it's just, we can make it better. Let's put it that way. And so we're going to go back with, we're in our picture format tab. Go ahead and click the picture effects group. Scroll down to glow. We've been here before. And we want the bright green accent there. Well, that was quick. Okay, so um, the last row, third column, glow 18, bright green accent color three. And that emphasizes our picture here, right? And this is uh, this slides on park safety, all right? So without any further ado, um, we're on to step number 11. So on slide five, we'll insert a text box below the content placeholder on the left. And anytime you see anything blue on these graders means that we're going to type that in. So let's jump to it. What you'll do is, uh, I'm already there, but make sure that you are on the insert tab and you're looking for a text box that's over here in the text group and that will give you a uh, kind of a sword looking deal a cursor to insert the text box and it says somewhere below um, the content placeholder so sort of in that area and then what we're going to type is i've already forgotten all employees will be tested on park safety procedures okay so click all oops Bear with me just a moment on this one to get that sorted. Insert text box down below here. All employees will be tested on park safety. What was it? Procedures? Let me make sure. Hey, I got it. All employees will be tested on park safety procedures. Do not forget the exclamation point at the end. And by the way, don't worry. If your text box, uh, I'll even show you, winds up kind of hanging off the edge right here, because the next order of business is we're going to align it manually. So click on the shape format tab if you're not there already, and you're looking for the arrange group, the align button, and first we're going to align to the middle. I'm sorry, you're going to align center, that's not middle, that's middle, but then you actually want to align it to the bottom. Okay, so to be clear, align center, not middle, pardon me. Um, align center, and then align bottom. And then from there, you're set, and you can go ahead and click on slide six, which is blank. All right, so in the shapes gallery, under basic shapes, we'll insert a diamond of any size. Hmm, anywhere on the slide, that's a lot of freedom. So, and here's a fun one, where you... Um, what you'll do is go to the insert tab, and we're still here on slide number six, insert, and we're going to go to the illustrations group, click shapes, and what you'll look for is under your basic shapes, have a look for the diamond, which is right here. Click the diamond, and you can draw it any size anywhere. You'll see why here in a moment, so click and drag out our diamond shape, and that'll open up a shape format tab up here on the top. Um, from here, you want to change the height to 6 and the width to 8. So in your shape format tab in the size group, 
first one is going to be 6. And then our width here uh, will be not 3, but 8. And there you go. Um, make sure that you have the diamond still selected, and it's all right if it's a bit off, because what you'll do next is align it. So in the Arrange group, Shape Format tab, Arrange group, you want to align it to center, and then align it to the middle this time, so that the diamond shows up right here in the middle and looks as such. Uh, then what you want to do is you'll go to the Shape Styles group, click on the More button, and you're looking for Moderate Effect Bright Green, Accent 3. So it should be this one right here. Check. And let's check on the step really quick. So um, we've got five points for step number 12. Step number 13, we just aligned uh, the slide to center and middle. And we've applied the moderate effect bright green shape style. So now it looks like we have a few more things to type and only 14 more points left. So on uh, step number 14, it wants us to type sensation park. Entertainment group welcomes you inside of the diamond. So let's jump to that really quick. And from here, you just start typing, right? So um, what you do is just start with sensation, arc, entertainment, group welcomes you, exclamation point. Make sure that everything is, um, the beginning of each word is capitalized. And uh, pardon me, um, what you'll do too is uh, shift and select all of this. You'll change the font size, I believe it wants a uh, size 28. All right. So now what you'll do, um, we've changed the font size. Great. Um, I'm going to select what I did is I selected outside and then I selected back in so that the text is deselected, um, but the diamond is then selected. And then in our shape format tab where we already are, you'll go to shape effects in the shape styles group, click shape effects, scroll down to bevel. And the one we're looking for is called round convex, round convex. And we found it. All right, so go ahead and click that. And the next order of business, it wants us to say all oh, in Sun System. So if you're on a Mac, it may be called Art Deco. Um, eh, it's a decent uh, art style. Uh, I'm, I prefer um, romanticism and uh, realism, some cubism, um, though I do really enjoy uh, the Renaissance style of art, early Renaissance. Um, you know that, uh, step 15, you know when it's time to insert a header and footer, um, that we're really close to the end. And so on the notes and handouts, we'll include the date and time updated automatically, page number and a footer with 2G orientation. We'll tag it as orientation, save it, submit it, and we'll see how we've done. So you'll find the insert tab, right? So on our PowerPoint, um, go ahead and click on insert tab. In the text group, you'll find header and footer. And another reminder, if you hover over these, it'll tell you what it is. You can also learn more about it by clicking the Tell Me More button. Um, but you'll hit, uh, you'll click, I'm sorry, header and footer. Then go over to the Notes and Handouts tab. That's one that's missed fairly easily. And you want to um, click on Date and Time so that it updates automatically. You want to include the page number, so be sure to click that. And then click on the footer. And you'll type in 2G, capital G, pardon me, underscore orientation, right? 2G orientation, boom, and you will go ahead and apply that to all. And then we're on to the very last step where we need to display the document properties and add the tag uh, as the tags, pardon me, um, type orientation. So let's insert that tag and I'll show you the whole process of uploading your work and again, getting feedback to improve upon that work. Um, so bear with me, we're in PowerPoint here. Um, and so we'll go to file and info. I'm just gonna make sure this is recording. We're in business, cool. Good to see all of you, by the way. Um, so in PowerPoint, uh, again, we'll go to file, click on info and over on the right hand side under tags, you'll type in orientation. Click outside of it to make sure that it um, hears it. I'm gonna save the file and I'll show you how to get that file uploaded, right? 
And so first order of business, you'll go ahead and go back to my lab IT, PowerPoint 2G orientation, right? Um, so you get here by clicking on our course and then course materials, chapter two, and then PowerPoint 2G orientation. We downloaded the materials. We've worked on the assignment on our computer. Now we need to upload it here. And I left it right there in my downloads. And this should be the file. Um, yes, indeed it is. I'll double click it. Press the upload button. And we'll wait for it to say success. We'll submit it for grading. Okay, be patient on this page. It should say pending. Oh, and it totally closed my tab. Hey, Beethoven. Um, let me uh, do a quick pause. And once you've uploaded it, go back to My Lab IT, refresh your page, and it should put the score right here. If it says pending, uh, just go ahead and refresh it or sign out and sign back in. Um, looks like we did well. And so if you got below a 90% to see your work, again, I showed this on the last walkthrough video and on my intro video, um, but it doesn't hurt to um, reiterate some things and to go through the motions. So what you do is you, uh, as I did right there, click the three dots and click on view submissions and then click anywhere in here to view the submission. And it'll show you all of the steps. And I should have purposely made a mistake so I can show you, but just go back to the end of the Greater One video or my short video on um, how to get feedback from a grader. That's on my YouTube account. It's a seven minute long video. How to submit a grader is a five minute long video. Um, but here is where you'll get feedback if you made any mistakes. You can also download this right here, the live comments report, uh, to get a, uh, to get comments and notes on your PowerPoint file that will show you, if you're more of a visual learner, it'll show you um, where you may have made a mistake and then uh, how to go back and fix it. Super handy, hope it helps. Um, that's it for PowerPoint 2G. Um, I'll be back soon with a chapter three walkthrough for you all as well. Um, keep up the good work and as always, uh, take care, be safe and enjoy PowerPoint.